Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor, and today I'm going to talk about a learning experience. The other day I decided to do an Emerge World, you know, standard updates, that sort of thing, and I ran into a small problem that was being very difficult. So I wanted to share my experience with you, and hopefully this will help somebody out in the future. So after I did my sync, and then I did my standard emerge-avu, capital N, capital D, world, it came back that I had a package that had been deprecated, and that it was no longer required, and that it was, it was masked within the repos. And if we go over to here, it was virtual PAM. I'm usually not too interested in virtual packages. So when, when you see that, normally it's more of a placeholder. And it said here, the mask comment was committed, indicates that this package is scheduled for removal from our package repository, blah, 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 blah. It also says not needed due to open PAM removal. So I thought, great. If it's not needed anymore, then I can go ahead and get rid of it and get rid of that uh, error that pops up, or not really an error, but a warning message that pops up. Now, besides that, I was also getting a couple other warnings, and they had to do with OpenSSL and OpenSSH, both of which were stating how there were conflicting packages and dealing with requirements for different versions needed for those specific packages. And I wish I would have just taken a screenshot or something so I could show you the exact verbiage. But if you've used Gen 2 for any period of time, you've probably seen this before, where it'll say package X is in slot for required dependency of Y. And it's also required for, or it's being stopped or hindered from being installed from another package requirement and only one instance can be installed at a time. Unlike other programs such as Perl or Python where you can have different versions of the exact same program side by side in different slots. So what one needs to do is try to figure out how you can fix the conflict and then get everything up and running. Normally what I would do in a situation like that is I would remove the offending package and then allow it to do a preserved libs rebuild where it would usually uh, recalculate how it needed to build and rebuild against everything and reinstall it all. So that's what I did with OpenSSL and OpenSSH. And what ended up happening was everything appeared to reinstall. It ended up uh, installing probably about 64 packages and I thought, great, you know, it's probably fixed those issues. I reran Emerge World, and those exact same packages popped off, with, popped up again with slot problems. And on top of that, it was then telling me that I needed to unmask Virtual Pam so that packages requiring it could work. Well, that seemed to be a little bit more of a problem. So I looked at the article again, and one thing it had said to me was, please update your packages running Emerge with the changed depths option. Now, I don't know about you, but I have never used the changed depths option before. I don't even remember it ever being talked about. In this article here, I was trying to find a little bit more information on it. It talks about uh, the change steps and what it does. And it says installed packages with stale dependencies can trigger unsatisfied dependencies if they specify an incorrect package or an incorrect version of a package. Hmm, that sounds a lot like my OpenSSL issue too. And it says install packages with stale dependencies can trigger dependency conflicts if they specify an incorrect package or incorrect version of the package that conflict with some other package that is required. Yeah, missing updates to new package versions, for instance, unspecified dependencies removed by the depth clean. So 
this is something that they've put in there as of, it looks like it was last edited, 29 January 2018. Well, when you're only updating every once in a while, very seldom do you run into something like that. And maybe what I was doing manually and a little bit more difficult, with a little bit more difficulty, it could be done a little bit easier. So what I ended up doing was, let's get out of here real quick, doing an emerge dash dash changed dash depths dash a v u n d at world and I use that command right there when I use that command what was only about 40 so odd packages that needed to be updated suddenly turned into 500 packages that needed to be updated and pretty much what it was doing was looking at everything and finding all of these dependency changes that hadn't been looked at for probably years because this particular build of Gen 2 is around five years, maybe six years old. And I have been patching it and keeping it running for that long without having to start all over again. So once it went through the list and it brought up all those different packages, I think in total I ended up having to re redo at least between 535, 540 something odd packages that it ended up having to rebuild in total because of the things I did in the beginning to try to fix it manually and then this. Yeah, it was a great deal, but at the end of everything, it showed that there was no longer an issue with OpenSSL. There was no longer an issue with OpenSSH and the virtual PAM message about it needing to be uh, unmasked so it could be used was gone. What that tells me is that it redid the dependencies for OpenPAM and it redid any dependencies that were listed for the OpenSSL and SSH and it fixed those issues. Yeah. Now, it took nine hours to compile all of that code. And I'll be honest, it makes me wonder what did I really gain out of nine hours of Gen 2 compiling other than the fact that, yep, everything works great. After a reboot, everything looks proper. That's always a big fear after doing a large update like that is rebooting and finding out that something else is now broken. But that is one of the better benefits with a source-based distribution over a binary-based distribution. And that is, if a package has a problem, it's usually going to stop installing, or I should say compiling, and it'll spit out some issues, and you can look at them, and you can usually figure them out if you look at about the last 10 to 15 lines that it was trying to do. And while Emerge isn't perfect, it's quite near it. It usually can determine and fix most dependency issues or figure out what needs to be pulled in. But sometimes there'll be a bug like that that pops up and you can look at those last 10 to 15 lines of code and you can see exactly, well, it's trying to call this particular library, this particular program, and it's either an older version of it where it's looking for a newer version. And maybe they didn't change their e-build file when they were updating all this to specify that it still needed or it needed a newer version of uh, this particular dependency. Usually you can find that, update the dependency, restart the emerge, and everything continues to move on. And that is one big benefit to a source-based install. Whereas what I have found in the past with a lot of binary-based distributions is that it just lays down the package. It's just laying down files that have been pre-built and prepared for your system. And what can happen is you lay down those packages and it's not looking at any other packages when it does that. And it could lay down stuff that 
inherently is flawed and broken because the other programs that it requires are not available. I think that's why in many times I would have problems with binary distributions and another reason why for a long time I have stuck with Gen 2. It's hard to believe that it's been at least 16, possibly about 17 years since I've been running Gen 2 and I've always been very happy with it. But a lot of people question me daily, or not really daily, I don't talk to people enough <laughs> about Gen 2 daily to be talking about this, but a lot of times people do question what are the benefits of Gen 2 as a source-based distribution because of how long the compile times are, how long it takes sometimes to do these updates, and then sometimes uh, the Gen 2 group will change the uh, profile, for instance. And when they do that, there was one a couple years ago that required us to rebuild the entire world and in some cases, for instances like myself, that's over 11, 1,200 packages that it had to rebuild. It took me at least a day and a half to two days of my system just running the fan blowing full speed and trying to compile everything again. And you always get worried after something that large with those little compiles that you're going to reboot and something isn't going to look right. No. Nope. I worry too much sometimes. Most of the time I've been able to always get my Gen 2 box up and running and everything is looking good afterwards. But what does it really gain me? Not much when it comes to performance. And really the, the biggest benefit that I see is being able to use those strong use flags. Being able to customize a specific program to exactly how I want it to be compiled and how I want to use that program. I have often thought, and I've been asked this, what, how, what would you do if it completely died? And you know, I have pushed in the past Calculate Linux and I still think Calculate is a great way to get your feet wet with Gen 2. I also think that as I get more distracted with not wanting for a nine hour compile time just to update my system that calculate may look like a better idea and if this build ever does die completely I may switch over to it and see how it works because I feel calculate has some great options in regards to if you're not changing a use flag in a program, there's really no reason to recompile it for your system. You're not going to gain any real performance boosting uh, advancements. As fast as computers are nowadays, most of the time the nanoseconds that you're going to increase your program's efficiency isn't even going to be noticeable by, noticeable by you unless, of course, you're running things that take hours upon hours and hours and those nanoseconds do finally add up to, oh, you saved yourself 4.7 minutes compared to if you'd used the binary application. So with the calculate way of doing things, if you don't change your use flags, a lot of times a binary version of that package for your system installs instead. And if you do change the use flag for a specific application that you're trying to get, then what you end up getting is the compilation and the source code where it builds it for your specific needs. And that really helps out. So if it's morning, evening, noon or night, whatever you're having, I hope you have a great day. I hope that changed depths might help you in the future when you run into some problems like this where it's asking about programs that are in one slot that can't be in multiple slots and that there are so many dependencies that require version X versus version Y. I hope that helps you. Thank you. Bye.